25 years ago, I sold my soul to the devil to become a corporate executive. I quit it all to play the blues. My name is Tom the Suit Forced, and this is Chasing the Blues. Good morning, everybody. It's another great morning. In fact, today it's a beautiful day. Uh, and I say that because I have one of the writers of that iconic song. We're going to be talking about that in a second. I uh, just wanted you to know that we are somewhere in our in our second season, so we're somewhere around the 60-plus mark in our cast, and uh, have just recently interviewed the blues legend Samantha Fish. It was a great uh, interview. And somebody I'm really just loved interviewing, uh, the rock legend Mark Farner, such a nice guy and really has a wonderful attitude about life and, and what he shared I think is is worth listening to. But today I am really, really excited because this person is somebody that I've been listening to for a long time. And when I say it's a beautiful morning, uh, it's a beautiful morning. I think I'll go outside a while and just smile, just take in some clean, fresh air. And that is Felix Cavalieri. Hey, Felix, how are you this morning? I'm doing well, man. Thank you. Well, I'm so glad to have you on. I, uh, I'm i just going to let people know just one or two little things about you here. Uh, you are a legendary member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You yeah. have been inducted in the Songwriter Hall of Fame, Hammond Hall of Fame. Those of you who don't know, Hammond, you know, Hammond, Oregon. Uh, Musicians yeah. Hall of Fame and Museum in uh, just last year. Uh, vocal yeah. Group Hall of Fame, Grammy Hall of Fame, and uh, apparently the Twin Father Hall of Fame. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Absolutely, twins. Yeah, yeah uh, people, I just, uh, we were talking before the the cast and uh felix you let me know you have twins yeah i had uh, four girls and one boy so i had a big family and uh you know just, my work's almost done but uh, i've had a blast yeah wow. that is amazing you know i yeah. was uh <clears throat> my wife because uh, i do this a lot my wife said well who are you interviewing today and i mentioned your name she said oh yeah the rascals and then she started naming she said, oh, you know, good loving, uh, I've been lonely too long, um, Fantastic. a, a beautiful like morning. And then she gave kind of this guttural sound that sounded a little sensual to me when she said, uh, how can I be sure? <laughs> so well, that's, a, that, that's, that's a good sign. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great freaking song. So tell, tell us, what's going on with you these days? Well, what's going on with me is, you know, kind of like my work has kind of like been postponed till further notice. And, uh, man, I really miss going out there and playing for people, man. I, I was, you know, I, I live in Nashville. Uh, yeah. I, I got down here quite a while ago to be part of this wonderful music community. And uh, I got a great band of guys who really love playing. And, uh, man, we're just, we're just sidelined here. So I'm doing play, pretty much trying to keep healthy and uh, trying to keep my mind alert and awake and alive. And I've been doing a lot of writing, you know, uh, musical writing particularly, yeah. Uh-huh. So um, I also know that you're a producer. You've produced a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, you know, uh, basically uh, I... I when I first started hearing rock and roll music, I noticed that there was like a lot of different places to enter into this fray. And, and one of them was as a producer. And uh, so, you know, basically when we started, uh, when we started recording, you know, uh, my initial idea, which was uh, to produce ourselves. And I really wanted to produce from day one because it's kind of like, uh, you know, being a cook and putting the ingredients together. And it's a lot of fun. So uh, I, I really enjoy that. That's great. Yeah. Um, I, I, I did read and I understand that you're uh, still very, very active uh, in the Nashville area doing that. So that's great. Uh, you well, know, I, I was, do sitting, what I could do. Yeah, I was listening to some of your songs today to just remind me and gee, I, like my wife had mentioned, you know, the hits just kept on going. But I, I thought of one and I listened to it this morning. Um, 
that I thought was so germane for today and where we find ourselves today. Can you guess which one that is? Absolutely. Good loving. Ah! No, only kidding. <laughs> well, good loving is <laughs> – that's why you have yeah. uh, so many children, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> I was actually thinking uh, people got to be free. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes. I, I remember it all. It comes – it's very, very clear. Well, i got to tell you uh, – that one should be re-released or at least a video done around it, man, because I listened to it, and like most of your songs, um, it wasn't on the dark side of things. It wasn't on the negative side. It was on the positive side of it. I've always felt like that. I mean, seriously, I, 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 I really don't think, for the most part, people need to hear my problems. You know, uh, I think uh, people always... I like to hear the positive side of things. If in fact it doesn't become maudlin and kind of like silly, but I mean, I think that 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 uh, that song uh, carries a lot of weight because of the uh, uh, the way it was written, which I, I can explain to you if you have a moment. Yeah, please, uh, please. I was working for Robert Kennedy's campaign. Oh, very very seriously involved. Uh, you know, in those days, uh, a lot of us we were involved in. Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't even call it politics. We're trying to change the world. Yes. You know, for or a lot of ways. I mean, you know, basically I, I've been involved in civil rights since I was a kid uh, because of the fact I'm Italian American and I always felt that, you know, like Italian Americans were not treated the way other Americans were treated, which is kind of true today, even today. Uh, and and uh, so I'm involved in all of these things. All of a sudden, uh, I was actually dating a girl who was, present at the horrible assassination of Robert Kennedy. Oh. So basically, I, it, it just struck me as, uh, okay, it's time to say something. It's time to do something. It just really shook me because we were really, really very, you know, I mean, like anybody that's running for a part of a campaign, you're really involved in terms, we're going we're gonna to change this whole planet, man. We're going to blah, 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 you know. Oh, yeah. So it, it just came out of me like, uh, you know, I, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to write something. I got to say something. The record company was not too thrilled with that idea because for some reason they thought we were going to shake some trees here, you know. And I said, why, man? I mean, like, a, you know, it, it's a positive song. Well, it turned out that that song became number one in not only America, but in places around the world that were oppressed such as in those days, Hong Kong, which is still impressed, yeah. uh, oppressed, yeah. and uh, uh, South Africa, which is, you know, it's, at least it's, it's different than it was, uh, Berlin, which had the wall. I've been really proud of that. Yeah, well, that, honestly, I, I, as I say, I listened to it all today. I listened to the whole thing, and I thought, that's the message that we need to be out there today because we've all – We've been so polarized and we've taken such divergent sides that now when you say, well, this is what I believe in, you know, you're likely to be called an asshole. Well, you know, I mean, this is America, you know, and when you, when you come into the harbor here, you see that lady with the torch in her hand, you know, what does that say? I mean, it doesn't say only only white people are allowed here. I mean, it doesn't say that at all, you know, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the contribution that has been made. I mean, it's ridiculous to even talk about what our world would be without without the other people, the races. And, you know, also from a, a really like a kind of like a, a scientific point of view, what's the difference? I mean, what, what do we have? Different food. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's true. We, we like different foods. I mean, it's so <laughs> silly. We're all made up. We're all made up of the same same thing. And, 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 and if you get to a spiritual level, we're all made of the same thing. But I guess we need another hundred years to kind of realize that. Well, you know, uh, just just a quick thing. My family is like the modern family. I have a, I have a black son-in-law who I absolutely love. And I was thinking the other day that my support isn't about a black man. It's about a man who's black. Exactly. Exactly. And and I, I I think it's it's a subtle reference, but to me it means, you know, we're all men, women, and uh, doesn't matter if we're orange. I remember one time I was working down in Florida, you know, which is kind of as you know, tourist city, 
and this, uh, I guess we were down in Orlando, and this busload of Ghanaians got a, a, I think they were from Ghana. Mm-hmm. Man, I never saw the happiest people in my life. Man, these people were like, just like, you know, they were just smiling from ear to ear. You know, and I said to myself, man, you know what? People should get get to know some people that come from, you know, other places in the world and just see, like, you know, they don't have anything like we have. I mean, maybe some of them do, but they're happy, they're smiling. Over here, people, I don't know, what's the problem, man? You know, we got the best country in the world, and, and okay, we got a little problem going on now, major problem, but we're still, we're still doing okay, you know what I mean? I mean, for the most part, you know, if we can keep keep our businesses opening, uh, instead of all our friends closing down because of this pandemic, we we got a pretty darn good place to live, man. Let's not ruin it. Yeah, you know what? I think some of it's the context of the '60s. If if you didn't grow up then, if you grew up later, you think that this is like the biggest problem the world has ever seen. Oh but, no! You know, if you if especially if you grew up in the '30s or the '40s, you, you think this is well, a, you know <laughs> this is a walk in the park. Us, uh, <laughs> Those of us who've had parents that were, you know, in the in the Second World War, man, you know, I mean, can you imagine? The entire world is fighting. You don't know who's going to come out on top. You don't know if you're going to be alive, you know. Uh, I remember reading Keith Richards' book. I don't know if you guys read that, but if I you did, haven't, yeah. you should. Yeah. And he said, yes, I remember I was living in this place, and uh, the German Air Force was bombing us, and then I moved... And uh, they were bombing us again. I was con- I was convinced Hitler was out to kill me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, Keith Richards may still think that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, like I say, that generation, man. Let me tell you something. Yeah. I'll take my hat off to those oh, people. Oh God, they, yeah, yeah. They let me tell you, the, they took it in the face. Oh man. gee, I gotta go take the laundry to the store today. Oh my God, I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's that's a good perspective. So yeah. so I I know you have uh you have played and been with some of the biggest performers on the planet. I I was just looking at some even beyond the the Rascals. Uh you know, I saw that Ringo and you've done some stuff with Billy Joel, Todd Rundgren who's one of my favorites. And I saw that you did something with Bonamassa, but I didn't get a chance to finish it. Is that was that in a uh, collaborative? Well, I met him when he was. I met him when he was very young, and you know he's another Nashville guy now. You know, and yeah, a yeah. really charming, talented human being, great yes. guy. And yeah. uh, it was really an interesting thing because this friend of mine who uh, w- w- she has this big hotel in uh, Washington D.C. Uh, it's called the Old Mansion. She said, "I want to do an album," and I said, "Okay." So we went into the studio. She brings this young guy in. This guy named Joe Bonamassa. I never, I mean, I, 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 and then, uh, you know, I said, well, here, pl- play something. And I said, like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> are you kidding me? I mean, it was like outstanding, you know, and it, and it really, really, uh, you know, impressed me. And I said, do that again. And he did it again, only better. So uh, it's no surprise to me that this, uh, this fellow, and, and you know what, he's the nicest guy you ever want to meet, man. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> as a musician, I have to tell you, I hate those guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. They, well, he, you know, he grew up. His father had a music store. I think it was in the uh, in Syracuse, if I'm not mistaken, New York. Mm. And I had the pleasure of meeting his dad and mom, and and they were just as nice as he. But he grew up with instruments all around him. Practice, practice, yeah. practice. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, he. He is quite. Uh, he's he's quite a performer. That is for sure. Absolutely. Can you, uh, in your life of uh, touring, I bet you've got a story for us somewhere. Oh, many, you know. Yeah, give us one you can share on the airways. (laughs) Well, you know, you you mentioned Ringo. I mean, traveling with Ringo was was really, really gas. He's another really great guy, Mm -hmm. you know. And what I respect about Ringo, first of all, he's a fantastic family man. I mean, he, he is so in love, it's embarrassing. You know, but God bless him. He and his wife, Barb, they just, they adore one another, man. And you see that. And, you know, uh, they travel together. And, uh, you know, uh, that was one of the big impressions. But, I mean, as as far as, like, uh, you know, like working with Billy. Billy, I've known Billy Joel since, God, since he was a teenager. You know, um, I don't know. I'm just really blessed to have a lot of friends that, uh, you know, that I really, uh, first of all, enjoy being with. And, second of all, enjoy playing with and over the years, I've, I've I've really met 
you know, you mentioned earlier that uh, I, I was writing a book. I put down some of the names of people who I've met and been around in my life. I've met a lot of people, man. You know, we just lost uh, Trini Lopez. Right. You know, I don't know if people know who Trini Lopez is, but Trini Lopez was really good, man. Really yeah. talented, you yeah. know. And again, you know, like uh, uh, a Mexican American. What do you know? <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. <laughs> so, so tell tell us a little bit about this. This is a memoir you're talking about. Well, I tell you seriously, what happened? Uh, basically, we did a tour. We, meaning the Rascals, we did a reunion tour uh, in. Uh, what was it, 2013, uh, we did Broadway. Uh, it was uh, called Once Upon a Dream. Right. And I know we did press conferences. And at the press conferences, each of us were asked sometimes the same question. Well, there were four of us, and there were four different answers to every question. Mm -hmm. so, so I said to myself, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, I think I better write down what I remember because, phew, I, I couldn't believe. I mean, uh, every story was really kind of different, uh, and uh, you know, I said, like, I said, okay, so that's the re reason I did that. So I, I wrote it mostly about my life rather than about the Rascals' life, because seriously, I mean, Rascals' part of my life was only about five, six years. That's mm. it, you know. And then the rest, you know, I've been on my own. I've been doing whatever I've, you know, been fortunate enough to do. So that, that's how that came about. What uh, when you have wrote this and you're you're saying it's about your life? Was there a central theme to it? A central theme? Well, actually, there's a few of them. You know, okay. um, basically, I, I think you know it it it, uh, uh, it it passes through like you know uh, first of all music 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 music. So music music would be the central theme. Very fortunate that my mom at an early age decided that I had some talent and she put me in a very, very serious classical music school at five. Mm. And I did that until she passed. I did that for eight, nine years. And, uh, yeah, you were like I got 14 a great, when she died. That's I, I yeah. That. And I, and I, I got was, a great education. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just, Go ahead. And, and that really shaped my life, of course. But as I say, music would be the main theme, you know, and, and then the second, the second part of it is, uh, I guess you'd call it spirituality because during that, that period of the 60s, you know, I did a lot of uh, exploration and, and I ran into uh, uh, a very, very fortunate uh, uh, encounter with a, a guru, with a teacher, Swami, mm -hmm. uh, Satchidananda, which is S-A-T-C-H-I-D-A-N-A-N-D-A -A -A -A, because it's not an Italian name, it's an Indian name. But mm -hmm. when I pronounce it, sometimes, <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> And so those two things go throughout the whole thing. And, you know, I kind of left, as far as the rascals, I, I really left it more to the fact that, you know, we had a wonderful, uh, wonderful career. And I left out a lot of the really nasty stuff because, unfortunately, you know, uh, it, it's one thing that saddens me is the fact that, uh, you know, people... People just don't get along like uh, we should get along after all those years. And, and that, that bothers me because, I mean, these are my brothers, you know, and uh, whatever happened, uh, I still don't know anything that happened that was bad, you know. Uh, you know, so a lot of groups have, have a lot of problems with uh, alcohol, drugs, uh, embezzlement, somebody stealing somebody's girlfriend or wife. We never had any of that. And uh, so that that's the only thing. But I kind of did not really go into that because I, I don't really think people want to hear about that, you know. So I continued from that to my life as a family man. And, you know, so those are the main themes. So you, you know, when we were off air, you had mentioned that that's in what you would say in the works. What uh, what's the timeline? For well, we. We have a, uh, a publisher interested and a distributor interested, but everything has come to a grinding halt right now. I mean, uh, you know, I'm a big book reader, and, um, you know, I go down to uh, Barnes & Noble here, and it's kind of sad. You go in the store, and, man, the magazines are still March, April. <laughs> they're, not getting, they're not getting the new stuff. There's like three or four people, employees in the store, you know, uh, what's the sense? I mean, we were planning on doing some book tours and, you know, a little bit of uh, in-house concerts because I, I wrote the book with a co-writer uh, who's a professor uh, down in Florida. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we figured, hey, we'll do some, you know, we'll do some uh, joint concerts. Well, we can't, you know, so we're, we're on hold. 
and I'm hoping, you know, we're all hoping for January to be uh, a new year. I'm well, you know, get I, everything going. talk about being on hold. I, I looked at your tour schedule and it looks like you've got, uh, you know, a lot of things happening or is that still on or they just weren't removed? Exactly. See, basically, we started off the year uh, uh, with about 35 dates between January and June. Yeah. None of those have played. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, as I say, my band, my guys, you know, people have to understand that, you know, the people who work around musicians, the crews, the production people, the, you know, the, the road people, they're out of work. All of these people, man, are really hurting, you know, because there's no shows. So, uh, it, you know, for me to say, oh, wow, but, you know, thank God. I mean, I can kind of afford to stay home, but a lot of people can't right now. No, and, uh, I know. That's that's the thing, man. I mean, we got to realize that these guys, they operate, you know, when we operate, you know. The other thing that's happening now that's really kind of scary is that people who rely on, on, on percentages such as... Uh, you know, agents and managers, and they have no income coming from their artists. So basically, they're liable to jump into another profession where they can make money. And man, we need those people. You know, I mean, you know, this is the music business. It's not the music music. Without business, we don't know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so tell us, because you've had so much experience, and you still do, uh, where do you see the new world after, after let's say post pandemic, let's talk about 2022 or something like that. Where, where do you see the music business going? Well, I mean, the music business has taken a turn, uh, for the last, oh, maybe 10 years, five years, at least towards streaming. You know, the online is definitely where it's at. There's no question about it. You know, uh, it's the Spotify and the Apple Music and, you know, all of those uh, Pandoras. That's where it's going. There's no question about it. Because it's there. You don't have to leave your house. Now, as far as live, live well, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. Because I am not sure that the online experience trans translates to the excitement of being in the room with a... With a uh, with a band. I, I've been just reading one of these uh, books right now that uh, it's kind of a science fiction book, but it's about a, somebody who actually saw this coming about a world where, you know, basically you're not allowed to, uh, to uh, be uh, together just like now because of like some danger of uh, spreading something. So everybody's online. And then there's a group of rebellious musicians who say, well, how about that, man? I don't want to be online. I want to play clandestine. I'm going to have these little places, you know. And, and, and I don't know. Uh, you think people are going to want to get together? Well, I guess if they get a vaccine and if everybody takes the vaccine, uh, maybe we can get together. But in the meantime, I'm not sure, you know, especially, you know, my age group. I'm not sure they want to go out and, uh, you know, touch each other's elbows, you know. Yeah, it's I, yeah, it's not their elbows we want to touch. That's for sure. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I've got a ticket, season tickets for the Tennessee Titans here. I, I don't know if we're going to have games. I, I don't no, know if no. if people are going to sit that close to one another. Especially, you know, as I say, you know, my my seats are with some older people over there. And I don't know if they're going to go. I, I I don't know what's going to happen. But as far as music is concerned, people need music. Music, music heals. Everybody, man, it's just it's something that we really need, and 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 I've I've also found myself at this point in time being extremely in a creative mood, you know. I guess all of the emotion that's around. So fortunately, you know, long answer to short question, we've got computers now where we can make music. You know, we can like for example, my guitar player, uh, he does uh, guitar for Rod Stewart. Well, Rod Stewart doesn't live here. They send it online. You know, he downloads it puts it on his, uh, what we call a DAW, which is a workstation, mm -hmm. records his guitar, sends it back. That's how we can make music today. Not as much fun, but we can still keep it going. So do you see yourself back on tour after this is all over? I hope so. I mean, like I say, I hope so. I mean, I, I first of all, enjoy the heck out of it. So does my guys. And... You know, as as we, you know, 
we we get to people like you're talking about, you know, your wife loving the songs and stuff like that. When when you have people out there that really feel what you were trying to say and really want to reconstruct that type of feeling on that time of their life, it's a joy. I mean, seriously, playing in front of people like that, it, yeah. it's it's a great thing, you know. And uh, I hope I can continue. I, I tell you, as long as as long as I got the health and the strength to go out there and do it, because even traveling is dangerous now. So you know, we don't know. So will we see anything uh, recorded from you in the near future? Well, I fortunately took this time to do a new. Uh, I don't know what to call it, album. I guess whether that's still a word. You know, uh, <laughs> I uh, uh, I had started it before all this happened, so I got a little bit of a you know live musicians at a studio, and then as I say, we took it home and did it uh, basically uh, on a computer, and uh, I'm done with it now. And uh, again, it's in the same boat as the book because we were we were thinking of putting them together in like a little package, you know. Uh, 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 I, I think it would be a great thing if we can get it. Well, we're all done. We just got to get a, you know, got to get a title and we got to get some, uh, we got to get some, what do you call it? Uh, 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 label album information and stuff like that. And, and uh, that's ready to come out. That's great. Uh, Felix, oh, that's fun. you got a good website too. I, I just want to share this with people. It's F-E-L-I-X-C-A-V-A-L-I-E-R-E music.com it's got a Correct. lot of stuff on it uh it's got you know obviously a great bio a ton of music shows uh live sh- um recorded shows a lot of videos and stuff so i hope people will check that out and definitely want them to uh definitely go back and listen to some of your past music but definitely focus on some of your new stuff that's coming out so well, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like I say, that's that's really what it's all about. I mean, if you have to stop touring, you don't have to stop writing and, and creating. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I know myself, and, and I've talked to a lot of other musicians. This is kind of a reset button in a way. Oh, yeah. You know, if you're not, if you're not grabbing your stuff to go out and, you know, you're busy, busy, busy on tour... You're home and you're just, you know, you're either doing nothing or you're writing. And that's kind of, I think, where a lot of us, a lot of us are these days. Felix, thank you so much. Um, love to, when you get the the memoir and your new music, would love to have you back on the show and talk about the future with you. Hey, my, my pleasure. And, and uh, thanks for taking the time and uh, say hello to your lovely wife. See <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think she liked you too much. I, I'm going to have to talk to her after this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, you have man. a good day, my friend. All right. Hey, blues fans. Did you know that Bobby Rush calls the Blues Festival Guide his roadmap to the blues? The Blues Festival Guide magazine is jam-packed with feature stories, art, and photography by blues top aficionados, with half of the magazine dedicated to blues festivals that happen throughout the United States and around the world. The Blues Festival Guide is the ultimate resource for any serious blues fan planning a festival itinerary. For more information, visit with them on the web at www.bluesfestivalguide.com and look for them on Facebook and Instagram at Blues Festival Guide. Now, back to Chasing the Blues podcast. Gypsy woman told by mother Just a while before I was born You got a poor child coming He's gonna be a son of a gun Chasing the Blues is recorded at Factory Underground Studios in Norwalk, Connecticut. You can learn more about Factory Underground at factoryundergroundstudio.com. And connect with me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tom the Suit Forced. You can find my music, tour dates, merch, and more on TomTheSuitForced.com. Thank you for listening. <laughs>